And welcome back, everybody, to another Let's Learn Dungeons & Dragons with Togoth. In this chapter, I'm going to be going over stats, how they affect your character, how they affect the game, etc. So, stats are basically what creates your character. It's their skills, it's their abilities, it's everything. Uh, it's the backbone of your character. 10 is the average number. D&D um, has basically set 10 to be the average for what a normal standard human being is. A normal standard human has 10 strength, 10 dexterity, 10... You know, I'll go over all the stats there and what they are, but that's basically the basics behind what the stats are. They'll affect your combat abilities, your skills, your talk, the ways you talk with people and how people perceive you. Pretty much any skill that you might possess can somehow be traced back to one of your stats, and so thus it's very important that you allocate them correctly and uh, use them correctly. There's six basic stats, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. If you remember in the first video when we picked the column and we had six um, uh, numbers in there, each one of those numbers you will set as a player correspond to any stat that you want or you have to go in order. It, it all depends on how your group wants to do it. We pick any of those stats to go into what we want. Um, stats though aren't really what matters. If you remember you saw the 14s, the 15s, the 18s, what really matters is what's called your modifier. That's what's going to affect all of your abilities and all of your strengths, stuff like that. Uh, the way you calculate a modifier is you take your stat minus 10 divided by 2 rounded down. So someone with 17 strength will take 17 minus 10 is 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 rounded down is 3. So 17 is a modifier of 3. Um, I think this only works for positive numbers though. But you know 14 wisdom. 14 minus 10 is 4, divided by 2 is 2 wisdom. That's your modifier. Uh, so obviously it's better to have an even number modifier, if you can, because that's when the skill point goes up. Um, I don't know if that works for negative. You can have negative modifiers. With the way that we roll up our characters, you can't, unless you get a magic spell or something that affects one of your stats, but a modifier uh, can be negative. Let's say you only have 9 strength. Uh, 8 and 9 are going to be negative 1. 6 and 7 are going to be negative 2. Um, you know, all the way down. So 4 and 5 are going to be negative 3, etc. So going all the way down. But that's your big thing, is that modifier. So let's go over what are these stats. Strength. Strength is basically just as it says there. Your raw physical muscle and your raw physical power. Um, that's the easiest way to describe what strength is. It's just your raw muscle. Um, the first thing it affects is it's hitting with melee and thrown weapons. Hitting and damage are two very different things in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. Hitting is your ability to actually land a hit on the person, and then damage is how many points you do to them. You obviously can't do damage to something that you can't hit. So the first thing it'll do is it affects hitting with melee and thrown weapons. The second thing it'll do is it'll affect your damage with uh, melee weapons, mainly. Um, so a sword, you know, if you have a modifier of 2, 14 strength, and you swing your sword uh, you'll add 2 when you roll a 20-sider, and I'll, I'll get into combat and everything later, so I'm, I'm not overpassing it, just trying to give you an example. Um, you'd roll your 20-sider, you add 2 as you are to hit, and if you score a hit on that monster, you'll then roll your damage dice, which let's say it's a long sword, which is an 8-sided dice, and then add 2 for your damage. So you could even roll a 19 natural 19 on a 20-sided dice and still only do three points of damage. You can roll, you know, you can barely hit the monster and still roll maximum damage. 
Hitting and damage are two very different things. And what I will not go into is that all of these stats also affect skills. There's different skills which we'll get into, which is a totally different chapter in itself. Next up is dexterity. Dexterity is basically how coordinated you are. You are. Your agility, your reflexes, your... Uh, not speed, but yeah, I guess your your finger dexterity, your finger manipulation, stuff like that. Um, the first thing that it'll do is it'll affect your armor class. Armor class is how hard you are to hit in the game. Um, obviously, then a higher dexterity is better for some, yeah, you know, if you don't want to get hit. The next thing it'll affect is hitting with bows and crossbows, not damage. It will only affect the to hit unless there's something special about the bow or crossbow. In most cases, it'll only affect hitting with that weapon. It'll also affect your reflex saves. Reflex saves basically happen where if you step on a trap, you'll be given a chance, in many cases, to get out of the way of that trap. Is your reflexes, you know, you it's that innate ability to quick jump out of the way or something like that. That's what dexterity will affect. It'll also affect your initiative. Initiative is how early you go in a round. And again, I'll explain all of this in combat, but a higher dexterity will allow you to go earlier in the round. And remember, all of these are affected by modifiers and not the actual stat. So you, even with a stat of 18 dexterity, that's four in a uh, modifier. That's what's important. Constitution is basically how hardy you are, how much life you have in you, how strong you are, how tolerant you are, etc. Um, basically, if you imagine your big hardy dwarf is a perfect example of a high constitution. The first thing it does ultimately is it affects your hit points. Your constitution will affect how many hit points you actually have in the game very important. It'll also affect your fortitude saves. Let's say you accidentally drink a poison. Will your body be able to fight it off? Uh, let's say you get hit with a diseased claw, or you get bit by a poisonous insect, something like that. Will your body be able to fend off that infection? That's all part of fortitude saves, and a higher constitution will give you a better chance of shrugging it off. Next up, oh, and I forgot to put a picture for Wisdom. Oh, well. Wisdom, what you have to imagine, is a farmer, a wise old sea dog, something like that. It's it, that innate ability to reason things, to spot things, to search things. Uh, wis there is wisdom and intelligence in this game. They are not the same thing, not even close. Um, wisdom is that if you imagine a, f a farmer could be very wise even if he's simple. Um, the first thing it'll do is it'll affect your will save. If something tries to mind control you, will you be able to resist it? Do you have a strong enough will to resist it? The second thing it'll do is it'll affect cleric, paladin, and druid spells. Again, I won't get into spell casting until a later chapter, but that's part of what it does. Um, and it might not seem like a lot right now, but there are many, many critical skills that use wisdom. Intelligence. Intelligence is basically your, your wise old, not wise, your absent-minded professor could be very, very intelligent, intelligent with a low wisdom. So your absent-minded professor could be an absolute genius, but not very smart, or uh, not very wise, rather. It'll affect your total skill points, and it'll also affect um, how many wizard spells and things like that. Uh, skill points, again, I said I'll get into later. The final thing, and I'm kind of rushing now, is charisma. Charisma is generally what we call the throwaway stat. It's how people perceive you, how people look at you, um, 
how people judge you, a naturally charismatic leader, something like that. And the main thing that it does in this game, besides skills, is it affecting bard and sorcerer spells. So, hopefully this helped all of you guys. I do have to cut it off. Thanks for watching the lesson.